So uh, now we're going to hear from um, Winifred all that, uh, about that fabulous solar car that's outside. So over to you, Winifred. Um, so, hello everybody. Uh, welcome to the IB Tech Egg Show and welcome to the last Cornerstone presentation. My name is Winifred and I'm a civil engineer, 23 years old and part of the new solar team. And I'd like to tell you a little bit more about the new solar team later on, but I think it's important that we first establish what all of us have in common here. And I think that it's been somebody telling us that what you're trying to do Maybe it's a PhD, maybe it's a starter, or uh, some other difficult study that you're trying to do. Um, it's impossible, and you shouldn't be doing it. Well, that's what they told us when we said that we were going to build a solar park. And still we did it, and we actually became really successful at it. And I'd like to show you how we became successful at it, and what kind of technologies we used to do that. Um, But I first like to introduce you to the new solar team. So we're nine students from the Delft University of Technology from the Netherlands, and all of us have different backgrounds. So there's aerospace, aerospace engineers, electrical engineers, I myself am a civil engineer, applied physicists, mechanical engineers, and so on. And that maybe was the most challenging part this year, that all of us had a different background. But in the end, all those different backgrounds was actually what made us so successful and made sure that we had such a wide range of knowledge. So that's what, what, who we are, but what do we do? Well, we built a solar car and we call it solar car Nuna. And as you can see, she doesn't really look uh, like a normal car at all. And that's because we took aerodynamics in account a lot. And this is a very interesting picture because there's a lot going on. And this picture explains very well what our project is about. So as you can see, there's all these little kids in the background watching what we are doing. And that's good because we're trying to show the world how important it is to keep developing new technologies and also what you can already do with green energy. Because our solar Carmina, she runs solely on solar energy and she drove actually about 3,000 miles, or just under 5,000 kilometers, only using the power of the sun. So where do we drive her? Well, there's two locations that we do drive her, and in uh, the um, odd years, that's in Australia, and in the even years, that's in South Africa. So this picture was taken last October when we were racing there, and we were racing to about 17 other solar car teams from all over the world. And our biggest competitors are uh, Japan, Tokai. Are there any people from Japan in here? Well, a couple. Yes, I see one. Oh, good. They were our strongest competitors, and we really had a hard time meeting them because they were pushing technologies as well, and they, they also developed a lot of uh, new things. And we were also racing against a team from Hungary, and they were really good at uh, structural mechanics, actually. So we learned a lot from them this year, and hopefully we're going to put that into practice next year. So what else do you see? You see the kids that we're trying to inspire and teach uh, what we can do with technology, but you can also see the team, and they all know their place. Every single one of them knows exactly what they're doing and when they should be doing it. So once more, I'd like to show you that teamwork is really important if you'd like to accomplish something. And then there's Nuna, of course. Um, all technology, and I'd like to tell you a little bit more about those technologies now. So I'm going to take you through all of the uh, nine subjects that are shown here, because all of them, except for what are in our car, and I'd like to start with 3D printing. So what you can see here, and I'd like to tell you about 3D printing first, because it's one of the first subjects that we came across this year. Um, it's actually something that we're testing. So this is not in our car, we just use it for testing. And the see-through shell, as you see, it's 3D printed by our part of DSM. And it was very, very important for it to be see-through. Because what we needed to do um, was actually, like, we put some airflow in it, smoke, and then we saw how it was moving to determine if we were able to improve our aerodynamics with the shape. Uh, we did, actually, it was successful. 
So we made it out of carbon fiber and put that exact uh, shape on our car. Um, we use a lot of carbon fiber. Our complete car is made out of carbon fiber, and it only weighs about 330 pounds, 150 kilograms. So we're able to lift the car with just four people <laughs> and move it around if we want to. So this is one of the 3D printing things that we use, but it's not in our car. And I'd also like to show you what is 3D printed at the inner car. And it's uh, Luna's cowboy fin. So, before we had this, we, the end of Luna was made of carbon fiber, just like the rest of the body. And we really were struggling to make it as thin as possible and still have the rear lighting. Uh, because you needed to see them, and you know, carbon fiber is not see-through. Um, so it always was quite thick still. And then we discovered the 3D printing, and we were able to put the LED lights on like we always had them, and then have the C3D 3D printed strip as thin as we wanted to, to make sure that all the air flows off nicely. And we actually, with those two things that you just saw, we were able to prove Luna's um, aerodynamical performance by about 8%. So that really is a lot, and that in just under two years' time. So next up. And I think this is the most, um, well, easy one for a solar car, of course. It's energy harvesting. And we do that in two ways with our solar car. And the first one is the regenerative braiding, which came in really handy with all the hills in South Africa. So we use that an awful lot. And uh, of course, there's the second uh, easy one, and that's the solar array. The cells we use are just normal silicon cells. Uh, you can buy them at Sunbar, there are many one cells, and one of you can buy them. They're just on the consumer market, so that's not special. The thing that is special, however, is uh, the rest of our solar array, so the laminate. And it took us about four years of research and development to be able to make it, and this year we finally pulled it off. We were able to put our own handmade solar panel on our solar farm. Uh, so here you, you can see that there's still testing stuff and so on, it's not finished at all. Uh, and how does it work? Well, it works um, when the sun comes in. It goes through the top sheet. Um, some of it gets in the cell and some of it is bounced back. But because the top sheet is like prism shaped, some of it reflects back, and that was what's new. And it actually makes sure that our solar array was 1% more efficient than the last one. And some companies even call it the best solar panel in the world, so we're really proud of that. And it really makes sure that, that we won this time again. So here you can see the, the R&D process. And here you can see a picture of the final product. And you can see how she's shiny. Uh, so this was actually our first test day in South Africa. Um, and it was completely working and all the results came back good. Um, well, amazing if you, you can develop something yourself, and it's actually working. We we're really happy with that. So now you know how the energy uh, comes in, but where is it stored? Well, just like most electric vehicles, it has a battery pack, and we uh, make this ourselves too. And it's 20 kilograms of lithium ion, so very small compared to a Tesla, around 500 kilograms, for instance, but it still has a range of 500 kilometers. That's a lot, right? And as you this picture is very interesting as well, because what you can see here is that we opened up uh, our battery pack for the first time to our teams, and all the teams came running in. Uh, we cameras and trying to figure out what we did. So there's the Japanese team, the Hungarian team, the South African team. All of them were trying to make pictures and figuring out what we were doing. Then this one. Um, and you might already expect this in an electric vehicle. Like, where do you use wearables? Why are they handy? Um, well, I'll tell you. You can see the picture of a driver here, and he's wearing a glass. And it's actually an old Google glass. And what we did is that we used the Raspberry Pi, so that's where the internet of things comes in, and we put it in our car to measure uh, the g-forces on the side of our car. So then we could figure out uh, what speed do our car should be taken certain corners on the circuit? And that came in really handy because before this year, we really, really sucked at doing um, doing circuits. Like, we always, when we had to do that, 
um, a qualification race, we always came in like 13th or 18th or even worse. And then we still managed to become uh, first in the complete race. But just that part of the race, we, we weren't good at it at all. Until this year, when we figured this out. Um, because our driver could see, like he had this Google Glass on, and he'd have a bar there, showing red, green, or orange uh, at the time that he was driving. So he knew that, oh, now I can go a little faster. And you know what? He managed to come in second this time. So it was not even, it was, it was our personal record, but we also broke the track record of that certain track. So we were really happy. Of course, the record got broken straight away, but still we were very happy with it. Um, so we managed to start second. So this was one of our major uh, developments this year. But there's another wearable that we use, and it's from our sponsor, TomTom. It's uh, the smart watch, and we can see the speed on it when we're driving. So um, it's a backup for when anything goes wrong, you can always see your speed. Uh, but it's also like you can keep track of if your driver is still doing fine. So that's one of the other wearables that we used. Well, electric vehicles, this one is obvious, isn't it? Uh, I'd like to also I'd like to point out uh, the part about sensors and PCBs, because we use them too, but I don't really have a good picture of them. Uh, so the sensors, of course, they're anywhere. We use them for instance, for our braking discs to keep track of how hot they get. Um, and we use the PCBs, uh, they're usually custom made. Some of them are custom made by Word Electronics, they're on this uh, ID Tech X show as well. And they're for, for instance in the steering wheel. So we use them in a lot of parts in Luna. But I'd like to talk a little bit more about electric vehicles, because of course this, this is an electric vehicle. Um, and as you can see, it's driving on public roads. It's overtaking trucks. It's driving about 80 miles an hour. It has the performance of a normal car. Oh, we think that's pretty amazing. But even though it's performing like this, we don't really think it's ready yet to be on the roads like uh, the cars that you can buy at your local car lot. Why not? Well, we think that you should compare Nina to Formula One cars. And you can't really buy Max Verstappen's car at the local car lot, can you? This car, we're pushing technologies. We're not making it comfortable. We don't care about that. We just want it to be fast. And we just want to try new technologies in it. So that's what we're doing. And we strongly believe that those new technologies can be found on the consumer market in a couple of years. Maybe don't use those cool glasses uh, in Formula One racing in a couple of years. We don't know. Maybe for practicing. And maybe you'll have that solar panel. Maybe you can have it on your rooftop. Well, we're just saying, we think pushing those technologies is more important than bringing this car on the road. But then again, um, I'd li also like to make a comparison about mobile phones. So the first enabling mobile phone technologies were introduced in 1941. And it took over 40 years, four zero years, to have them on the consumer market. And look at us now. Everybody's got a mobile phone. So maybe, I mean, we're in Silicon Valley, the land of Tesla. We can bring this car to the market in a couple of years. It's just going to take some time. That's all. Um, so I'd like to take you to the last slide already. And it's, this is a picture uh, of us really in South Africa. So after 3,000 miles, we crossed the finish line. We became world champion in solar car racing for the eighth time. Uh, we were really happy, of course. Um, but that's not really where it ends. Because there are startups generated from this. Um, there's a new car already being built in the Netherlands. And that wouldn't be possible if we didn't have our sponsors. Because you can see there's a whole list on my t-shirt, but we have a lot more. Uh, we have them ranging from really big to really small. We even have one that brings us fresh fruit every week. And they are just as important as our main sponsor. So it's an open invite to all of you. Like if you're interested to becoming part of this, to maybe become world champion for the ninth time, please come seek us out because we're always open for another sponsor. Um, 
So I think I'd like to finish up with that about the presentation, but I'd also like to introduce you to the rest of my team, because maybe you've seen them already, they're the orange t-shirt, and they've been walking around all day and yesterday as well. Um, and you can ask them questions whenever you like. Um, but I'd like to ask them to stage and introduce them to you. So, come over. Because they are the faces about these technologies I just told you about. And they are just students of the Delft University of Technology. And they did an amazing job. So, this is Crystal. And she did, actually, she did all the maths this year. So she was figuring out during the race, what speed should we be driving to make sure that the battery pack is exactly empty at the time we finish the, or we cross the finish line. So then there's Siba. Well, I told you how important sponsors were and marketing, and he took care of that. Then there's David, our electrical engineer, and he was the guy that made the solar panel. He did it all by hand. And then there's Finn. He's our mechanical engineer, and he was the one that took care of all the 3D printing this year. So if you have any questions about that, you should find him. And then last but not least, there's Bo Celeste. He's our technical manager, and he made sure that all of us didn't get out of control. <laughs> uh, and we didn't get overworked, and only did like one research and development project at the time. So if you have any questions, uh, come find us at Boutique 29 um, and hope you enjoy the rest of the show.